John Jones was born in about 1597 into a Welsh-speaking family at Maesagarnedd near Llanbedr, which at that time was in Merionethshire. In the Welsh custom, he was therefore widely known locally as John Jones Maesagarnedd. As a young man, he went to London and served an apprenticeship in the Grocers' Company, one of the great twelve livery companies in the city of London. At the outbreak of civil war in 1642, he joined up to fight for Parliament. He eventually served in Wales as a captain of foot under General Thomas Middleton. He was at Conwy Castle, successfully besieging Colonel John Owen. He later besieged Harlech Castle, where Colonel Owen's brother William had held out for the king. He had also negotiated the surrender of the island of Anglesey. When peace returned, Jones became MP for Marioneth. He was appointed a commissioner of the High Court of Justice and sat as a judge at the trial of King Charles. The king's guilt having been agreed, Jones was one of 59 who signed his death warrant. He was the only Welsh signatory. The king was duly beheaded on the 30th of January, 1649. Deeply religious, Jones was made a commissioner for the propagation of the gospel in Wales under the presidency of Major General Thomas Harrison. Both men were fifth monarchists, which was an extreme nonconformist sect. But before taking on this role, he was sent to Ireland as a commissioner for affairs. As a Republican, he was suspicious of Cromwell's great personal power in the Protectorate of 1653, but it seems that he reluctantly went along with it. Jones had been married to a Margaret Edwards. They'd had eight children, of whom only one survived into adulthood. Margaret died in 1651. Five years later, he married again, this time to Catherine, Oliver Cromwell's sister, and who had been widowed some years earlier. His next job was as a commissioner for the militia in Wales, and after that he returned to Ireland, for a while being in sole charge of the army there. A political battle for power emerged between Parliament and its own army. Jones backed one army faction and soon found himself arrested in Dublin by another which was more sympathetic to Parliament. He was released on his agreement not to cause trouble. During this political chaos, John Lambert, a prominent soldier, locked MPs out of Parliament and became Major General of all military forces. This was, in effect, establishing a military dictatorship. But General George Monk, commander of the army in Scotland, wasn't having it and marched south. Lambert marched north to meet him, but his forces melted away. Monk took control of London. This paved the way for the restoration of the monarchy and the coronation of King Charles II. The new king was immediately set on revenge against those responsible for his father's execution. Some who had signed the death warrant years earlier had since died, others had gone abroad, but those within reach were to be tried for regicide. It seems that Jones could have fled, but for some reason he did not. The outcome of the trials could not have been in doubt. For example, Major General Harrison, the fifth monarchist mentioned earlier, had a grimly attired executioner carrying a rope, sitting near to him throughout his trial. Harrison was sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered, a brutal punishment of being butchered while still alive. The diarist Samuel Pepys watched the gruesome spectacle and noted, I went out to Charing Cross to see Major General Harrison hanged, drawn and quartered. He looked as cheerful as any man could do in that condition. He was presently cut down, and his head and heart shown to the people, at which there were great shouts of joy. 
At his own trial, John Jones admitted that he had signed the death warrant, he made no attempt to plead any point of law, and was, of course, found guilty. He was sentenced to the same gruesome fate as Harrison. On the 17th of October, 1660, he, along with several others, was executed. It was reported that he met his death with courage and dignity. And so ended the life of John Jones Mysegarev at the age of about 63. He could not have known that when he signed the death warrant of King Charles 11 years earlier, he had, in effect, also signed his own.